You are podcast number one. How do you feel about that? I don't have any feelings. So, podcast number one, officially starting, and of course, starting off with numero uno, my number one. Stop! Okay, (laughs) hi. (laughs) So, I asked some questions on IG stories, and the ones you have in front of you are some of the ones that they asked. No, this is pretty much everything they asked. Well, not everything. Not everything. Mm -hmm. Some weren't allowed to be put on here Mm -hmm. because... A little too personal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. So let's just start. Let's mm-hmm. start with the personal ones first. So what college did you go to, Pat? Okay, so I went to UP. So I started in Open University and then I transferred to Diliman. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And I went to DLSU. Went. <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay. Let's just leave it there. So I went to DLSU and ID 111. And do you have that thing there? Like yeah. ID system. I'm 2010. You don't call it like 111, 110. Okay, same That's thing. That's the year. So it's like so it's like you're being 110. Yeah. Okay. So since I did like two courses, I did my associate first. Okay. You know this, but yeah. <laughs> so it's basically <laughs> I sat two in your classes. Yeah. Okay. Till next. All right. So they're wondering who was the first one to get into bodybuilding. Well, that I was did. me. That was me. I did. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I guess. So I started first. I was, well, I started competing first. That was 2014. But I mean, we've both been lifting since that time. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't actually compete till, what, a year or two later? I think it was at least three, three years after I started. That's when we both competed. No, because... Because we started in Fitness 101 near my place, like a bakal gym, like a proper bakal gym. Yeah. Remember those? Mm-hmm. Like uh, straight bars and mm-hmm. like super, kind of rusty, but you know, yeah. got Builds the job done. Builds your immunity. No, but that's where you... No, not really. I'm just I mean, kidding. That's where, that's, that's where you <laughs> learn to lift because the equipment's not that complete. So you learn how to get creative with your lifts and... and then you bench every day. I was doing that way back, yeah, and even you, before And then that. you try to PR every day. Yeah. <laughs> so I was first, then you came after me. Yeah. And so why did you start? What made you start? Um, I decided I wanted to get, no, to look more like someone I saw on Tumblr. Do you still so, remember who she was? Yeah. Sh- um, her, I, I, I found her on Instagram much later. But her name was Justine Fit. That's not her IG name anymore? I don't think so. I think she changed it. Oh, okay. Um, but I saw her photo on Tumblr and I was like, I want to look like her. So before Pinterest, before Instagram, um, we were looking for inspiration on Tumblr. So we would save and repost. And then that's where I started to save my first Fitspos. So... Yeah, she was the first, and I wanted to look like her. So I owe her my you owe her, her I, entire bodybuilding career. Kind career, of. Career. Kind of. I guess. I mean, she got me. She inspired me. Mm-hmm. She inspired me. Well, I started weightlifting way back. I mean, I've been training for, what, 13 years? But that started with sports. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we always had to hit the weight room. But, I mean, I think it's fair to say that, like, a good two or three years of that was just me benching the entire time (laughs) no seriously after every practice we'd have weight training right Mm -hmm. and then everybody would run straight to the bench and everyone would just pr every single time so Mm -hmm. i mean it's just pr day every single day and pr and bench not even squats not even deadlifts it was just bench pressing so i guess that's why you know my bench is way stronger than my squat relative to my body weight not really i mean well it got better now yeah but i mean back then that's all i did Mm mm-hmm and I guess that's why chest development was so much faster because, yeah. yeah. Same with your biceps, right? I mean, you started with... Yeah, my first exercise was actually bicep curls. So I would do bicep curls in my room because that's the only thing I knew how to do. And I felt I felt that I was doing it right. So I guess I just kept doing that. Um, and eventually, I started thinking, hmm, what about this? this part of my arm like I only feel it in the front what about the back so I think a lot of people start from just experimenting and working with just random stuff they have around the house 
So I have a question. So what was the lowest point in your journey, in your entire fitness journey? Uh, I wouldn't say I really had a low point, you had a low but point. Uh, <laughs> a traumatic point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess the part where I felt the most hurt was when I joined my first powerlifting competition and I didn't do so well. I bombed out of my first powerlifting competition and I guess it hurt because it was um, my first uh, gym-related competition. Mm -hmm. And Kind of your first competition. I mean, you, you played basketball before, but I, I mean, it was your first, like, yeah, weight type yeah. of competition. And mm -hmm. it was, um, I remember that was in CrossFit Manila in Eastwood, right? Mm -hmm. That was the one. And it was not even a real powerlifting meet. It was just like a mock meet, I think. No, it was real. No, it wasn't. It wasn't recorded. It wasn't um, sanctioned. It wasn't sanctioned, yeah. yeah. But it was a real, honest-to-goodness competition. So I joined because I wanted to compete. So I think the part that hurt me the most was I felt like I finally found something in the gym that I was kind of okay at. And then when you join the competition and then you don't do well, it's like a reminder that, hey, you're not worth anything yet. You ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, you thought <laughs> you thought you were good or you thought you were decent. Well, no. What'd you bomb out in? Oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm pretending like I don't know. Yeah. So Pat bombed out in squats and she was training. Um, she was training well, relatively okay. I mean, it wasn't that structured. I mean, the program was just... You know, she was just doing whatever in the gym and she thought she could lift that. So she put that on on the yeah. on the sheet and turns out like, I guess the commands were so different, something we weren't used to depth. Yeah, it was depth. It so was depth. Um, the reason why, actually, it's not because I wasn't training with heavy weight. It was actually because I wasn't um, familiar with what true depth was. Mm -hmm. So um, when I, parallel. yeah, so when I would record my sets, I would film from the wrong angle. So that angle made me think that I was hitting good depth, but I wasn't. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was an adjustment, but I really had no idea. So that was like my first f um, foray into uh, stricter technique because, you know, no one's watching you in the gym. So, but of course, when you're in competition, <laughs> I, you have I'm like three people you. watching you. <laughs> you have like three people watching just like that one thing. So... Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I guess it's kind of my fault too because, I mean, you had me to watch your squats and I was benching every single day. <laughs> you weren't even <laughs> squatting yet, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, for me, my lowest point in my journey and my career, I can't actually even really think of one and I'm hoping it hasn't arrived yet or, <laughs> or it's still to come because, <laughs> you know, I mean, everything so far, I haven't really been at a point where I disappointed myself that much i mean i guess the most would be after you're mute. lying what's that you're lying okay so it was after mutant 2014 and he thought he was gonna win i thought i was gonna win af af with like 80 to 100 physique competitors like i came in thinking that okay i'm gonna win this whole thing i was delusional but i mean how else are you gonna come into a show you have to kind of believe in yourself because if you don't i mean who else will so and that'll show on stage. I mean, that's always one thing. Like, you can see somebody's confidence on stage. Like, okay, this guy looks good. It's confident. Yeah. I mean, you look at the person more. But I guess that was the closest to being my lowest. So. Yeah. Lowest placing. <laughs> Lo no, I wasn't. Yeah, that was your lowest placing. I made top 20. Yeah, which is just your lowest placing. Yeah, okay. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you get back up after your lowest point? And after, like, a rut in general? I just kept working. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I love weight. I love lifting weights. That's always something I've loved doing. So it's not really that hard to get back into fitness because, I mean, regardless, I'd still be doing it anyway. So, I mean. Yeah, you yeah. don't have a hard time going back to the gym after a call. No, I enjoy it. That's something I would normally do anyway. So how did you get out of bombing out? Um, I cried a lot. <laughs> I cried a lot because I was so hurt. I was so. It was more like a, like a should you be doing this or not? So I was like, you know, this can't be the last time I compete. So I, I that's actually the point where I hired my coach. Our coach. coach. 
my coach, originally my your coach, coach at the time, <laughs> my coach Zach. So that's I. It was just like a random. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna contact someone. I'm gonna get help. Um, and and he stood out because um, he seemed like he had a no nonsense approach. Mm-hmm. So um, I like. Uh, how his athletes were performing so I contacted him and he's been my coach for uh, years now for all my co- my competitions so even for bodybuilding he was my coach yeah, and it was funny because sorry coach but I used to take a look at Pat's programs and I would kind of copy it emulate it <laughs> just you know because he was on a program I wasn't so <laughs> I would try to see like okay what's Pat doing oh what, what, what did Zach put for Pat what did, he, what did he put what's in the program so I tried to copy that and it just wasn't the same mm-hmm. so eventually i i got him too to coach me make a program for me and ever since i mean i'm not currently on it right now i mean he made me a program for the lockdown but uh limited equipment so but yeah ever since zach he's great yeah he's Mm -hmm. the best highly recommended next daily routine and workout split Mm, my workout split is all over the place you're not really training that regularly. I am. I train sporadically regularly. <laughs> yeah. So I train about twice a week. Yeah. Full body. Yeah. Yeah. I train around three times a week. Yeah. Used to be more, mm-hmm. but it's benefited me so much. I mean, I'm getting extra rest, and I think that was a huge part of what was difficult for me back then when I had to put on weight. I mean, I'm putting on weight a lot easier now. And I, I think that's the extra rest. Mm-hmm. And I'm eating more. So those two things combined. Yeah, three to three times a week. Not that much, actually. And we try to train early now. Try to train um, in the morning. I try. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the safety protocols that gyms should be implementing during these times, during the pandemic? Uh, I think they're doing their best. I mean, scheduling is important so that they don't overload yeah. Um, the equipment and the environment. Um, I definitely think it shouldn't be air conditioned, but I feel like a lot of the members wouldn't have that. No way. <laughs> I'm for just having um fans. Well, you've always liked training in the heat more. Yeah. I was the one who always liked training in AC. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't think the members would take that. <laughs> well, I mean, they're at like what fifty percent capacity now, so I mean, it shouldn't be that hot. I mean, less people in the gym, less heat. Right. Yeah, but not just for the temperature, but also for the air circulation. I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize. It's uh, like when you're in one area and there's no um, windows, you're just circulating the same air. And yeah, it gets filtered, but um, I guess can't hurt to have air flowing in and out. Yeah. And somebody asked, do you think that masks would hinder training honestly i don't think so huh for sure it would i mean a bit but i mean okay here's the thing i guess the way it would hinder training is you know a harder time breathing right well i I guess so i mean it's a time limit now in the gym so i guess i mean if you go to anytime fitness i think they give you like a one or two hour window something like that Mm -hmm. so i mean if you only have that much time you're not going to get a lot done because you're going to be winded after your sets so i mean if you had unlimited time then I guess it's fine. Yeah, and and um, whenever you do a big lift, you always take a big breath, right? So mm. when you take the big breath, you're gonna suck your mask into your mouth, <laughs> and then when you blow out, like you're gonna blow your mask away from you. So that's true. I don't see how that would work if you if you're. I mean, like that's pretty standard for any big lift. You're gonna you know take those a big altitude breath. Altitude masks, the ones in CrossFit that they used to train. I mean, some people used to buy masks to train in to restrict their breathing. I don't know yeah. if that's like bs or not i mean i think there's some benefit but in these times why would you make yourself why would why do why would you make it harder for yourself to breathe (laughs) but i mean wear your mask in the gym yeah i'm definitely all for that Mm -hmm. wear your mask wherever you go there's nothing wrong with wearing a mask Mm -hmm. right i'm actually still on the fence on whether whether gym should be open but um yeah it is what it is Mm -hmm. So tell me, what is the, well, let's answer. So the question is, what is the success story of Booty Band PH? And sh- this person would really love tips because sh- um, he or she just put up a startup business. Um, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to answer this. Personally, I feel like 
Um, this is very, very nice, by the way. Whoever said, whoever said success story, thank you for saying that. Um, but tips, uh, first of all, work hard. Um, I think one thing we have noticed all throughout is that when we work harder, we see more results. Mm -hmm. So make sure you are always trying to see where you can improve. Make sure you're always trying to see where you can be more efficient. Um, another thing is to make sure your customers are happy. Because if they're happy, they'll talk about your products. Right. And that's the cheapest marketing and the cheapest and most effective marketing you can have. Yep. A good e if they have a good experience, they'll tell their friends. If they tell your friends, you have more potential customers. If the experience is what the person who recommended the brand is, and it lives up to it, then it's a good, I guess, word spreads a lot faster that way. But I mean, we started in 2017, around December, right? Mm -hmm. And we just started, uh, actually, I think the success of Booty Band PH was um, us being able to build our own social medias up, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have, I mean, if you're going to start a brand, you have to have, you have to get the word out. Mm -hmm. So I guess... By building our social media at the time, that was, I mean, we've been building our social media since 2013. Yeah, 2013. Yeah, 2013. So it started with that. And then... Yeah, there was a lot of trust. Yeah. And of course, um, since, we va uh, since we know that uh, trust is huge in the industry, especially when you're endorsing products. Yeah. Um, I think that... You know, when we did endorse our own, I think people trusted that to a certain extent. And it was one of the differentiators between us and another similar product. So yeah. since they know us, they know that, you know, we're not going to be us when it comes to these things. And you've been training with bands since, God, how since, long is that? Yeah. Yeah, 2013, pretty much since you started lifting weights, right? Because mm -hmm. you had a hard time activating your glutes, mm -hmm. so... You looked up loop bands. Yeah, so and, yeah. I tried to get my own, but eventually they just weren't cutting it for me anymore. So that's why I made my own. And then you also were using a sweat buddy yeah. to a certain extent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, during preps, that's right? That's true, And yeah, then he okay. would go through so many. Yeah, so, I, I used to buy like two or three of them at a time because, of course, one would be wet and sweaty. Yeah. And then I'd forget. I'd leave it in my bag and then it starts to stink. So I'd have to buy a yeah. new one. So that's actually something that we both were using a lot. And yeah. that's why whenever people ask, like, does it work? Well, we use this a lot and Tried we believe and test in it. it. So, yeah, it's up to you. Try yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, the sweat buddy thing, um, during prep, I would always wear a slimmer band. That's mm -hmm. what you called it before, waist trimmer. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's called. It's a neoprene waist trimmer. So during cardio or during my entire workout, I just wear this band. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you can look it up. It's in Lyle McDonald's books. Yeah, and we're not saying, like, uh, I think a big thing was people think that just by wearing it, you know, you're going to get shredded. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Obviously, he was on prep when he was using it, and he doesn't use it during a bulk. So, um, for whatever it forever, whatever it's worth, if it, if it helps you even just mentally, that's already worth it. But, I mean, there's even studies on it. I mean, I'm going to tell you a secret. Look up this stuff. Pro. No, <laughs> the stubborn fat but yeah. Protocol. Okay, so it's called the stubborn fat protocol by Lyle McDonald, and even he says, I mean, touch the areas in your body that store the most fat. I think for guys, it's lower back, and yeah, lower back, mm -hmm. and for women, it's triceps and, and legs and legs. Yeah. So if you actually for anybody, guys or girls, touch your butt. If you've been standing for a while, touch it. Touch the skin. It's cold. Yeah. So that's one of the problems on why it's so hard. It's why it's so difficult to burn fat in the stubborn fat areas because circulation is poor. Yeah. So when you heat up the area and you, you wrap it and you constrict it, you try to get closer to your core. You try to get like the, the, you know what I mean? Do I sound? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm I, think, I, think, it. I think you need to refresh. Yeah, I'm butchering it, but, but it's something like that. Yeah, just look it up. Yeah, so you can look that up. So, yeah, that's how Booty Bands started. I mean, it started with the Booty Bands for you mm -hmm. because you always use it, used it to activate. And for me, it was the Sweat Buddy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are our two best-selling products. And now we have lots of colors. Yeah, now we have all the colors. <laughs> <laughs> so, on to the relationship stuff. <laughs> relationship and marriage. They didn't really ask a question. They just said, That was it? That's it. Relationship <laughs> and marriage. Okay. 
let's maybe save the relationship stuff for another one and let's go straight to the workout stuff the things that people want to hear and let's get started so have you ever tried chloe ting's workout i actually haven't tried any of her workouts but i've seen some and they're not they're not the the worst i've seen yeah it's the claims yeah i think it's just you know like she says oh get abs in 30 days or something like that and I think most of us already know that that's not possible. I think the people who are hating on her are just jealous, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, she has to get the click some way. So, I mean, it's clickbait. Yeah. I mean, use your head. You can't do, you can't get abs in 30 days. So, um, you know, just take the workout for what it is. A but, workout. I mean, I saw a few of her workouts and other than that, it looks pretty good. I yeah. mean, it's getting people active. So, I mean, why not? You know? Yeah. I mean, if it gets you up, it gets you doing exercises, gets you active, then... Why not? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. What are the worst exercises? Uh, worst exercises. I think anything done behind the neck is not advisable for most people. And not because it's bad, but because I feel like people use heavy weight for behind the neck stuff and they really don't need to be doing heavy weight yeah, and doing behind the neck stuff. Um, so it, not that it's inherently bad. It's just easy to mess up. Yeah, and yeah. if you hurt yourself, if you injure your back or your neck, yeah. your spine, that's that could be a career ender. So, mm -hmm. got to be careful with those. Is it optimal to add one set for a lagging body part? So, for example, the left shoulder is lagging from the right shoulder. Mm, one set, um, you know, that could be a lot. Like, let's say you're doing 25 kilos for your uh, dumbbell press. That's a lot if you're going to add one set. <laughs> So I would I would just start with your like if we're gonna do a single arm exercise I would just start with the left. Yeah, so you have more energy before yeah. going into the exercise. So if you're gonna be tired, mm -hmm. might as well go into it full strength with the weaker arm. Or maybe add like a warm up set for um, the lagging side. Activation. Yeah. Yeah. Would you consider online coaching? For myself, yeah. I mean, I have a coach, mm -hmm. but would I consider no, I think what they being mean an is, online coach? Yeah. Uh, it's not for me. It's Same. Not for me. Sadly, it's not for me. Um, I think, I mean, we both started with training ourselves for a while, and then we eventually hired a coach. But I mean, in terms of like diet and nutrition, all of that stuff, I think you can learn that on your own. Like there are so many resources now online that you could learn flexible dieting or counting your macros or whatever. And you would be at par with a lot of the p things that others teach you. So, I mean, in terms of online coaching, not for me either. Not the basics, at least. Maybe for contest prep, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there are better people than me. <laughs> yeah. For who would be better online coaches yeah. to most people. <laughs> but I'm interested in contest prep coaching, if ever. Yeah. Yeah, but not like the basic yeah. stuff. So, diet and nutrition. How do you deal with a large appetite? Ah, that's for you. Yeah, that's me. That's for you. <laughs> I saw, um, okay, so large appetites. Um, first, I think you have to think about why you have a large appetite. Is it because you are in the middle of a diet? Or is it just because you have had a large appetite since you were a child? Mm -hmm. So um, if you have a large appetite because you are deprived of food, then you have to fix your relationship with food before you start trying to run circles around your appetite. And I think intermittent fasting works really well too. I mean, when you shorten your eating window, you get to have more food in a shorter mm -hmm. time span. So you'd be more full if you're looking after that fullness, that, you know, that feeling of being full, then that should really help a lot. And um, an easy way to actually make food more filling is to add vegetables to everything. Like your zucchini oats. Yeah, so zucchini in my oats, zucchini in my coffee. Um, <laughs> that I was, also that's like deep into prep stuff, though. Like, yeah, that's when you're getting desperate for like that feeling. Yeah, you have so to start adding zucchini. Actually, no, sorry, I have to start grating zucchini and putting it in your coffee. So what would you put? Like a hundred grams of grated zucchini? That's actually a lie. I grated my own zucchini. Mm -hmm. You probably did it like once or twice, mm -hmm. but he didn't do it right. So, mm -hmm. um. Yeah, so just add vegetables to everything. So like if you're going to make fried rice, try to add more bell peppers because bell peppers are low calorie. So just try to add um, low calorie vegetables where you can. 
add volume. Yeah, just to add volume. Um, because like people say add volume, but people don't really know how to add volume. So mm-hmm. just add vegetables where you can. Add right. cucumbers to your shawarma. Add yeah. um, like things like that. Just add vegetables. What about the diet fads that should be avoided? Oh, water fasting. Stay away from that. Uh, water fasting for weight loss is not, not advisable. Not advisable. But no, no, sorry, it's effective. But expect that you're gonna rebound from that. Like, there's no way that the the weight that you lost from water fasting or just fasting that's starving in general, starving yourself, that's not sustainable. Anything that isn't sustainable will catch up to eventually. And I think something that will make you just eat one type of food for a very long time is a very bad idea also not sustainable yeah aside from not being sustainable um you're once you start reintroducing food again um it's going to be hard in your digestive system when it's only used to eating one food so um he miko actually had a problem before when he only ate boiled food for a while yeah and then he had one very (laughs) very oily empanada no no, no. i had yeah i had boiled chicken i had pasta pasta (laughs) Yeah, pasta. Yeah. You don't have to say boiled pasta. Oh, yeah. How do you cook pasta? Well, you could eat it raw. Mm, no, no, no. Mm. So, so I used to have white rice, pasta, and boiled, boiled chicken, chicken breast. Yeah. And that was it. I tried it for a while, and then I had an Ilocos empanada. And then he got sick for like three days. So, yeah. So anything that has you eating... Can you stop? Anything that, that has to do with just eating one type of food and then, you know not guiding you after that's not a good idea yeah and i also think that i mean some diets like keto you can go ahead and try it i mean i don't think there's anything that should be technically avoided i mean i don't think you should try avoiding it altogether because i mean i think you learn the most when you try things out and then you learn from experience that okay this is not for you because if you don't try it you'll never know i mean some things work for some people i'm not going to say keto doesn't work for anybody because obviously it does but it's a very small population that actually can thrive on keto and keto alone biggest misconception on dieting and what dieting myths are not worth trying i think you have you still have a lot of no sugar people Mm -hmm. people who are like i'm gonna give up sweets or rice yeah newsflash guys rice carbs that's sugar same thing it's just a form of sugar yeah and when you give up things that you like uh, how how do you think you're going to sustain that if you're doing something that you don't enjoy? So um, if it comes down to just having a little bit of sugar, but you're happier, then, you know, that's so much better than cutting it out completely, being miserable, and then ending up having it anyway, but having that guilt associated with it. Right. And I think for me, the biggest misconception about dieting is the mental side of things. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people don't take in the psychology in dieting. I mean, yeah, I mean, if we're able to follow a diet all the way, like, you know, everything's perfect, it just doesn't happen that way because we'd we'd all be able to do it. Like, if we took the mental side out of it, we'd all be able to diet down. So put the mental side of, into dieting and and another thing is like when you have like a number you're fixed on a number like when it comes to calories you're at 1800 1500 1300 uh, i think people don't realize that these numbers can be um, completely different for this particular person so it's relative so for example, this person needs to eat less. That less for that person can be as high as 2,000 calories, especially like for someone like you who's very active. Yeah. So these numbers, the 131518, at best, these are just like jump-off points to make it easier for everyone. So what are the myths that are not worth trying? Let's just bang them out. What do you think? Mm, don't starve. <laughs> yeah, don't starve yourself. That's a good one. Um, don't go in zero sugar. Yeah, don't go to zero sugar. Don't be cutting out your favorite carb. Just work on lessening it. Yeah, don't have to not eat junk food. I mean, you can incorporate a little bit in as long as it fits your macros. Yeah, and don't be afraid of oil. Like if cooking your food in a little bit of oil. But oil is still calories. Some people think that if it's virgin, extra virgin olive Mm -hmm. oil, then it doesn't count. Healthy oil is still oil. Oil is still calories. Yeah, but like even then, three to five grams of oil is not going to ruin your diet. Um... Another thing is uh, doubling up on carbs. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, if you're eating rice, 
Or no, let's say you cut out rice, but you're going to eat pasta instead. Yeah, it's still carbs. No, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so, or eat bread. Yeah, or they have bread instead of rice. So kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, And when it comes to dieting, I think a lot of people don't realize that it's really just about time. So right. um, you could be doing it well one day, but if you don't, if you can't sustain it for weeks or even months without going insane, then it's not a diet. People that, are too impatient. Yeah, that is suffering. That's not a diet. <laughs> yeah, so we got through personal questions. We got through workout advice. We got through diet and nutrition. And, you know, I think we can save the rest, the relationship stuff for part two. Part two. Yeah, because there's actually a lot of relationship yeah, there is a questions. lot. Actually, if you look at it. It has the most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the least so, is diet the most is relationship so so we'll save that for the next one for the part two this is part one this is the first podcast please go easy on us guys it's my first podcast too so go easy yeah. on me <laughs> Ruby, this is both the first for both of us so hope you guys enjoyed it and that's it yeah if you if you guys have any more questions that you want to send in i mean you can dm us if you want to Send in some more relationship questions. Yeah. Well, we can add to that because yeah. that one might be super short. Yeah. Or we can just... Do you have black forest in between your teeth? Do I? I think so. Because <laughs> I was eating during the break. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to stay in. So let's end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys learned Miko. a thing or two. And that's it. Miko, we have to do it again. Nope. Miko, we have Pat, to do it again. It's fine. Nico. Pat. Nico, we have to do it again. Again, it's quickly, quickly. It's fine. I'm going to keep it in. Yeah, just do another one. Okay, so biggest misconceptions on dieting. No, we it's Nico, not going to last. Nico, okay, just do a quick one. Just to finish it. Have to be the same. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. That was it. And sorry, Pat. Looks like you're going to have some bread. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.